Good morning, Javier Becerra, Chairman of the Caucus, joined by our Vice Chairman Joe Crowley and two of our colleagues who have been very active on the issue of immigration. Our ranking member of the Subcommittee on Immigration and Judiciary, Zoe Lofgren, and our ranking member on the Homeland Security Committee on Border Enforcement Issues, uh, Sheila Jackson Lee. We want to thank the two of them for joining us today. We want to thank them as well for having made trips down to the border recently to see what is going on on the border with the humanitarian crisis involving so many children who are coming unaccompanied here to the border with Mexico. Uh, do want to begin by saying that we're facing that. We're facing a highway transportation fund that is depleted and needing to be replenished. We're facing the need to deal effectively with the situation in Iraq. We need to make sure that we are providing more jobs to Americans, building on the success of more than 280,000 jobs created last month, more than 5 million jobs created over the last four years. Records of success are building, but we can do much, much more. We don't have time to waste. We don't have money to waste. But what we're finding is that here in the House, rather than building on the Highway Trust Fund so we can put more men, uh, men and women to work building our roads and bridges and highways, uh, We've got to shut down on a vote to replenish the Highway Trust Fund. Rather than fixing the broken immigration system to deal with the border situation and the humanitarian crisis with so many children at the border, we've got to shut down on a vote to fix our broken immigration system. Rather than trying to deal with job creation directly, working with the President to create more jobs, thank God working the, with the private sector he's been able to do uh, quite a bit, we've got to shut down on votes to, uh, on a jobs agenda. And so we need to do more. We need to increase the minimum wage. We need to give women equal pay for equal work. We need to make sure that those Americans who have lost their job through no fault of their own don't find that those emergency unemployment insurance uh, benefits that they were counting on to help them get back on their feet are destroyed and never available. And so we don't have time to waste. We don't have money to waste. We just found out that uh, Republicans are planning to spend more than $3 million on a, another, a fifth hearing on investigation on Benghazi. Collectively, it appears that they're on their cor on course to spend more money for this Benghazi investigation as a committee than the entire budget provided on a yearly basis to the Intelligence Committee in the House uh, of Representatives. And so rather than recognizing we have little time and little money to waste here in the House of Representatives with this shutdown politics that we have, it's become very, very difficult. But right now we have to deal immediately with some of those issues that are confronting us. That includes the humanitarian crisis on the border. With that, let me yield to the Vice Chairman, who will then yield to Ms. Lofgren, who will then yield to Ms. Jackson Lee. I'll be very brief. <coughs> uh, Congressman Joe Crowley of New York, um, as the Chairman has said, uh, this is a humanitarian crisis that we're facing at our southern border, and uh, we need to respond. Uh, but beyond that as well, I think the American people are looking for a Congress, a Republican-led House representatives that is about doing the people's business, something that we have failed, that this Congress, the Republican caucus, has failed to do time and time again. There are a myriad of issues that we need to deal with, this being the latest of them. We need to pass a jobs bill, get Americans back to work. We need to pass unemployment insurance to take care of those who are struggling to find work for themselves and for their families, to get some support while they make those efforts. Um, we need to pass a comprehensive immigration reform bill uh, to deal with the overall issue of immigration. And yes, we need to pass this supplemental so that we can address the humanitarian crisis of children. These are children who are coming across into as refugees because of the violence that they're facing in their homelands. We need to address this as we have throughout. The, uh, we've seen other countries throughout the world do this as well. And we know that our, our, our friends and our our allies in South America and Central America are also dealing with these issues as well. We need to face up to these issues and from a humanitarian standpoint uh, deal with this. The American people demand us to do that. And with that, I, uh, I'm happy to yield to Zoloff from California. Uh, just uh, briefly, uh, several of us had an opportunity to go to the border last week and to see firsthand uh, the situation of uh, hundreds, uh, even thousands of unaccompanied children who have fled from El Salvador, Honduras, and Guatemala. The analysis shows that it, the, all of these children are basically coming from those three countries, and it's worth 
noting that they're not just coming to the United States. There's been a 700 percent increase in children from those three countries also fleeing to uh, other countries in the Western Hemisphere, including Mexico, Panama, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Belize. We know that we are a moral nation and that when some small child is here, Sheila and I saw you know, a toddler, a three-year-old, being held in a law enforcement setting, seven, eight-year-old children, that those children need to be uh, treated with compassion and uh, care. But we also know that there is a refugee crisis uh, going on in the Western Hemisphere and that we need to work uh, collaboratively with other countries to deal with that crisis in Central America. We need to uh, work with the uh, UNHCR, High Commission on Refugees, uh, not only to stabilize those three countries, but to make sure that if there are refugees with valid claims that they are dealt with without having to take the perilous trek of a thousand miles uh, through desert. So we uh, stand ready to support efforts to treat little children in a humane way, but we also hope that we can work uh, collaboratively and internationally uh, to stabilize uh, the rampant violence uh, going on in those three countries and to work internationally to deal with this uh, refugee crisis. And I would note also that the bills that have been uh, passed in committee uh, have never been brought to the floor for a vote. The immigration bill that passed the Senate over a year ago never received a vote in the House of Representatives. It certainly would have helped had it passed. And I will turn now to Sheila uh, Jackson Lee, the ranking member on the uh, border security who can address the uh, border issue. Thank you, Zoe, very much. Let me associate myself with the uh, words of my chairman, um, Javier Becerra, and as well my vice chairman, uh, Chairman Crowley, whose leadership we appreciate and emphasize that we collectively stand here uh, with the responsibility as national leaders to really explain to the American people. Uh, I do believe that we have an obligation to work on passing comprehensive immigration reform and passing and reauthorizing the transportation bill. They need to know we're here working. But right now we have an issue that has come that nations around the world have faced. We happen to be facing a catastrophic humanitarian crisis. And the faces of this crisis are innocent boys and girls. Uh, my colleague, Congresswoman Lofren, and I were in one of the detention cells at 10 o'clock at night when 50 children were unloaded, sleepy-eyed children, a speechless little boy. We were in the detention center when a little girl pressed her face against a glass jail wall and tears came down her face. We were in the detention center when, to use the facility, it was the typical floor toilet, the hole in the ground. Uh, this is not a reflection on our very able Border Patrol agents who are doing an excellent job. The cities on the border in my state of Texas are doing an excellent job. And they made it very clear that their uh, work in securing the border is still at the highest level. But here's where we are very briefly. Uh, we must uh, continue to process children who are underage and who we cannot at the border under our present law determine whether they've been trafficked. Human trafficking has surged. We know this is human smuggling. But it's important for the American people to know that the process of law that the administration is using has to do uh, with the understanding of how children have been trafficked, and that's why it was passed in 2008 under President Bush. We have a system, and so it is important that the emergency supplemental is passed to include more judges, uh, resources for Border Patrol and border cities, ICE officers, so that the law can be adhered to. But America is a country whose doors have been opened to those fleeing persecution. These children are fleeing persecution. And we are committed, I believe, as members, to ensure that our local communities who receive these children, one, are protected, and two, have the resources to handle this influx of upwards of 90,000 children. But I close simply by saying, in many instances, the United States has received refugees fleeing from Sudan, the Congo, 
Rwanda, Vietnam, places in South Asia, and around the world. As we know, Syrian refugees are on the border of Jordan and Turkey. The American people need transparency. We are prepared to do so, but it is also important that we find a refuge for these children until they are appropriately processed under the law and to pass comprehensive immigration reform, which will be a major solution to some of these enormous crises. With that, we'll take a couple of questions and we will have to run soon. Let me just um, address that because the, there has been analysis of who are these children. The UN did a recent analysis and found that well more than half of them are uh, uh, legitimate asylum claims. These are uh, children who have been sexually trafficked, who are uh, fleeing violence, who are refugees. The idea that they would simply be turned back is really not uh, in keeping with our laws or our international ob obligations. I will say this, the Border Patrol w was very impressive. What they reported to us was they're not chasing down these kids. These kids are running to find them, uh, to be found, to be safe from the violence that they fled. So what we need to do is double down on enforcing the law. And part of the law is uh, hearing each case and finding out whether a child will be sent back to a human trafficker if returned or, or if they can safely uh, return home. We need judges to do that. There are less than 250 immigration judges in the United States. You know, in Los Angeles County, there's 400 Superior Court uh, j judges. So, I mean, the, we don't have the resources to do this promptly, and we should do that. Uh, and I think if we adhere to the law, we're going to be satisfied with the results. Let me um, uh, indicate that you will um, be impressed by the number of administration leaders that were at the border when we were there. Secretary of Health and Human Services has been there. Secretary Johnson has been there more than one time, Homeland Security. Uh, some of the sub-cabinet members have been there. Uh, certainly a, a, a larger team of ICE officers, and certainly the President is sending additional Border Patrol agents from the state of Texas perspective, Department of Public Safety. So the infrastructure of the law is there. There, in actuality, um, my colleague has mentioned 230 um, immigration judges. Uh, the uh, Attorney General has the right to appoint them. I've introduced H.R. 4990 to add 70 more uh, because of the court case load that they would have. But we are not in any way ignoring the laws that are in place. You can be assured, or the American people should be assured, that we are following the law. And that law is once they run into or walk into or are, in essence, brought into by the Border Patrol agents, they're immediately processed and documented as to who they are. They become in the system and ready to be processed for their ability to seek asylum, to determine whether they're human trafficked. Remember, these are 8-year-olds and 9-year-olds and 10-year-olds. And it would be a horror for this nation to not have a process that would determine whether they were trafficked. And that is the law that was passed under President Bush. And it should not be rejected as a law that is an open door policy. It is not, they are contained. And they are in a detention process. Finally, the law says, as we transfer them to HHS, and Zoe and I were on judiciary when we were appalled where the children were kept in the 1990s and, and, and proceeded to look at this issue. Um, but please let it be known that the children remain in detention. Once these children are transferred to HHS, they are still in a detention uh, process until they are legally uh, allowed uh, to go to uh, a custodian, a legitimate custodian, adult, a relative, a family member rather, uh, that is then double checked by law. Uh, that I think is an important, and the administration is following the law, and we appreciate the fact that they recognize that these children uh, may be, in fact, uh, smuggled in, but trafficked in, uh, raped and abused as they come forward. Okay. Yes. What is your client's position with the Department of Homeland Security? Is it that the Republicans are attacking the shadow, the mafia provisions of the 
Let, let me um, start and just, there is a solution. Um, that's another important point uh, for the American people to know. I, I will give one of the obvious is comprehensive immigration reform that had a holistic view uh, because um, we want to make sure that all children, if they come from Mexico, if they come from uh, uh, further in South America, that if they are victims of human trafficking or smuggling, uh, that they will be uh, taken care of. I, I want to make this mention. Cartels, smugglers, and traffickers should be punished to the fullest amount of the law, and we should enhance uh, those penalties. This should not be something we fool around with. That's a, that's a number one um, I'm going to respond to. Uh, the solution is that they should be uh, very much uh, prosecuted and brought to justice. That the Houston drug cartels are telling families, if you don't join uh, this drug cartel or gang, we will kill you. But I think the solution has to be uh, a combination of things. Uh, this administration is putting forward an emergency supplemental. This is an emergency crisis, and we should make that known. Uh, the second is an easy fix beyond the comprehensive immigration reform is to pass uh, H.R. 1417, the border security bill that came out of Homeland Security, out of my subcommittee and out of the full committee uh, last year. Border security bill that came out last year, led by Mr. McCall and Mr. Thompson. That can provide additional resources. With respect to the children, uh, I think it is important that uh, an emergency declaration, I also think that we can heighten the advertising in this country to explain to loved ones the danger of bringing their children here in that manner. We must educate them. Uh, resources for our border security towns uh, is important. Uh, and a quick processing, a due process processing of the children through enhancing the court system uh, as well. And I know Zoe has a answer and I'll just uh, indicate uh, working more closely with the government of Mexico uh, and the Central American countries can be part of the solution. Legally, each one of these children is in deportation proceedings. Uh, and it's in that process uh, before a judge that they have an opportunity to see whether they are in need of asylum or there are certain other uh, under law uh, visas that they might be eligible uh, for. But in talking to the Border uh, Patrol, uh, you know, they were quite candid that the refugee crisis can't be solved at America's border. The refugee crisis is stemming from these countries, these three countries in Central America. And so, uh, you know, how desperate must you be if, if you have an eight-year-old and you hand that eight-year-old to a smuggler to go a thousand miles through the desert facing uh, horrible uh, potential abuse? How, how desperate must you be to think that that's a better alternative than keeping that child with you in Honduras? Things are very bad there, and we need an international effort to stabilize those uh, countries, or else not only the U.S., but the other countries in the region are continue to see people uh, fleeing from the violence that is rampant there. I don't go to the next question. Well, let me just say that uh, we don't know how many of these children are going to be eligible uh, for political asylum. But the analysis that's been done uh, by uh, uh, outside nonprofits as well as the UN uh, indicate that half or more uh, have a, a refugee uh, type status. But the point is we need to find out on a case by case basis. What, what is the situation of these children? If they are not a refugee, they will be sent home, and that's what the law provides. But if they are legitimately fleeing, then they will be eligible for asylum. You can't pre-understand what the case will be for each child. Let me try to take some more questions, but again, clarify on your question. The, the White House has not said that more than or a majority of these kids should be deported. They've said that they will process them all. They don't believe that all of them will qualify for the conditions that Ms. Lofgren and Ms. Jackson Lee have indicated about asylum or refugee status, but they've never said that they, they believe that ha more than half of these kids should be deported. Other questions? Yes, Mike.
building with the cartel, the Mountain Dew, except for the violence against the Americans and Cuban prisoners of Cuban mm-hmm. assassins. Yeah. Yeah. Let me why, why the emergency stuff now? Why do they feel that they are believed to struggle with good cause even though arrests were not made? Yeah, let me, I'll make sure we let our, our two rankers and along with the vice chair respond. I would simply say that the White House has been on this from the very beginning. The difficulty is, as you heard, when you don't have enough judges, but you don't have the resources to process these claims, and these are not adults, most of these are kids, we have a, a special process for children because we have to protect their due process rights and their lives. We want to make sure that we're not returning them to a place where they will not live. And so the process is what is the bottleneck. The, f- the administration has been enforcing the law. This is not a case of a lack of enforcement. The difficulty is that if you don't have the resources to put into effect the law, it's really difficult, and that's why you see the bottleneck. But let me ask both Ms. Lofgren and Ms. Jackson Lee and Mr. Crowley if they have anything. Uh, I, I think it's important to note that this has really spiked uh, since uh, this spring. Just for Honduras, for example, the coup d'etat was in 2011. That year, a little over 900 children came unaccompanied to the United States. The next year, 2012, it was uh, 2,900. Last year, it was 6,700. Year to date, it's over 15,000 kids. So it it tripled. And in talking to the Border Patrol agents, they said really that they could see the spike was around March, April. All of a sudden, there was just a flood of uh, young children coming in. Now, I think, as Ms. Jackson Lee has said, there are criminal cartels that are taking advantage of this situation, and we should come down on them very hard. But we also need to say there's something going on in these three countries uh, in terms of violence that has been uh, uh, quantified, and the numbers all of a sudden are overwhelming, and we've got to deal with it. I think the administration is scrambling to do that in the face of really a very surprising spike. The human factor. You you cannot corner the human factor. Um, And two points. One, um, if I might use the term, lies. So the drug cartels, human smugglers. These are these are human resources. This this is a business. Uh, And the traffickers took legitimate laws that have worked since 2008 misrepresented them and called it permissio. You speak to people who are desperate, uh, who are overwhelmed with violence, and you have violent drug cartels telling you, one, your child will die, or the traffickers and smugglers saying um, five to six thousand dollars, and there is a paradise over the border. Um, there becomes a surge. It it comes together as a human factor and the enormous violence. The chief of police in Honduras uh, was arrested uh, for murder. That's how bad the infrastructure is in that country. And let me say, we should be engaging with them. But that's where the surge came. The surge came with the absolute low level of devastation in these three countries, poverty uh, and the absolute... Uh, coming together of a business, the three as a business, making $240 billion, if my numbers are correct, in terms of the numbers or more. So um, it came together. The law was in place. The administration had facilities in place. They have done this over the years, taking children who have fled from those countries under the present state of the law. But when you have a human factor of businesses misrepresenting, intimidating uh, those uh, families, uh, and other families thinking that I have to get these children out. That's where the surge has come. It's almost like the crisis in Syria generated this enormous crisis on the border of Jordan. Uh, certainly doesn't equal what we're doing, but that's what happens, and that's what happened. I don't think in any way you can fault the administration for this. I, I want to just close with a, a story of a grandma we met last week. It's a woman, I would guess, in her late 60s, early 70s. She was there with three little girls under uh, 10. She was happy to raise them in Honduras until the warlords came and said if she did not give them money, 
they were going to take those little girls and uh, put them to use sexually. And so she left. She saved their lives. Um, I think if you, if you think about the motive of people to save their, the lives of these children, you'll understand that you can't, first of all, we have to have uh, compassion as a people, and America is a com compassionate country, but we also need to deal with the chaos that's occurring in those countries if we're going to see uh, an actual resolution of this uh, humanitarian challenge. I, I would <coughs> just quickly add, uh, when is a crisis recognized? When is a humanitarian crisis recognized? Uh, when it becomes overwhelming, when you see the images of the border, when you uh, hear the stories of children, boys and girls, sleeping on concrete floors in detention centers. To many Americans, I would dare say to all Americans, that's a crisis, a humanitarian crisis that needs to be addressed. The president has recognized this, and that's why he's asking for this supplemental. He's, acting, he's asking for the Congress to act, Democrats and Republicans to come together to deal with the immediate needs, to adjudicate, um, to, to provide the funds for the adjudication of these cases so that we can determine which children have uh, the right to stay to seek asylum and uh, become refugees and those that will be uh, sent back to their homelands. Take one last question. going way beyond where we are in the House of Representatives, and uh, let's see what the Senate does before we get there. Let's just close by saying this. Uh, I think the fact that our two rankers on the subcommittees of jurisdiction on the issue of immigration and enforcement have made it very clear that we intend to tackle this quickly with the President. This is not something we can waste time on or even money on because it's an urgent situation, as I think all four of us have described. We're talking about kids. And so we hope that this can move quickly through the process where this emergency supplemental uh, can come forward on a bipartisan basis. And we hope that what we'll find is that we're tackling this issue and not just sitting around twiddling thumbs as we've seen with immigration reform. Uh, when you combine greed and desperation, as we see down in the Central American countries, greed by these drug lords and uh, those who are smuggling human beings, and the desperation by these kids and their families, it's a dangerous mix. And we see it now on our border, and we have to act. And so the best thing we can do right now is work with the President on a bipartisan basis to get things done. With that, we'll close, and thank you, thank you all very much. Thank you.